quick sprints, take the disc briskly, sunshine glints off my frisbee, crisply, knows how it goes with the sand between our toes, we got both of the pivots and all of the throws, got to hold the disc and move it at the right time, when you flick your wrist and you're feeling sublime, compose your throws, not discuss fluttery, tricks from the brick and your biscuits buttery, feel the spirit, stretch every sinew, stream in courage, yeah, we continue, take my hand, yeah, come with me, from the disc to the sand, to the beach, to the sea, there's magic in the air, all you have to do is catch it. EBUCC 2022. Welcome back to the party in Portimao as we just fade out from the dulcet tones of Tom Styles. We have action, our first game from the women's division on this live stream. We have SUFC Valkyria from Sweden versus LFO, the local outfit from Portugal, which stands for Lelia, flying objects and after a bit of a shaky start initially, Valkyria punched their first one on the board. Hannah Pendery in the commentary perch this fine, warm Portuguese morning. It is warm, isn't it? It's lovely out here. I must admit, I was a little concerned. You know, beach tournament in the middle of October. How good is the, is the weather going to be? I needn't have worried. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Absolutely. And the Iberian Peninsula, it is... Uh, a very, it's been a fine couple of days. There was some rain at the beginning of the week, which was uh, not so great, but it's been warm and balmy. The sun is starting to rise, just glistening off the waters of the marina behind our camera view this fine day. Yeah, you've been, uh, you've been, you've been doing a little bit of sightseeing, haven't you? I have. I've been in Andalusia. I've been uh, in Granada, in Sevilla. It's been absolutely lovely. I have to say, Benji, people rave about the Algarve, but uh, Andalusia isn't as much of a tourist hotspot. It's a little secret for you Frisbee fans. If you fancy a very nice early October holiday, I happily recommend both those two cities. But disc given back to LFO after a bit too much of a zest on the defence from Valkyria, who have a very short squad. They are going to want to be clinical as much as possible in this game, but an overshot as we see the two players trying to connect for LFO. So the, Rodriguez, the intended target. The rostering rules relatively strict for this event. Got to have at least 10 players, no more than 16, of which you're only allowed three players who are kind of pickups, so to speak, not normally of your roster, as LFO, LFO get the disc back in short order. Oh, a lovely inside shot, finding the balls of Raquel Pinto. And that is the first goal on the board for LFO. Yeah, you feel that perhaps LFO may be more suited to the beach. With all due respect to Sweden, I feel like Portugal is probably more of a beach ultimate hotspot. Oh, absolutely a hotspot. And uh, Leiria, which is where the LFO team are from, clues in the name it's uh, actually sort of more towards the center of portugal it's a it's a full 25 kilometers from the beach side benji but uh, yeah i think portuguese ultimate athletes are able to get themselves onto sand a bit more often a bit more familiar with the surface which should pay off for them but looking at the roster of the swedish side there's a couple of non-swedish faces in amongst them I can't help but spot the name of Alex Benedict, who, of course, is a long-standing Canadian ultimate player. But came across to Europe, initially landing in London, playing for the club team Iceni. But she's not on the field right now. At the moment, it's going to be bricked pull. I must admit, I thought it landed out. They're just trying to work out where the brick mark is. Indeed, it's a third up the pitch in the centre. Normally the tape on the sidelines will have a fetching little indicator, but uh, ultimate players tend to be relatively intelligent, so they should be able to figure it out. But an overshot for Valkyria gives a half field opportunity for LFO. Yeah, both sides I think trying to uh, work out some early jitters here on the live stream pitch as a full extension layout D will earn the disc back. Oya Kochanova tipping it away. When you say about the Swedes not being really built for sand, I tell you what, these long frames and long slender limbs do work well out here under the warming Portuguese sun. Nice 
sort of easy feed. Oh, and a round break for the score. That was a really nice, just flowing piece of offense for Valkyria as they punch their second on the board. For both sides, when they put it together, we've seen already that they can be extremely slick here on the sand. But you do get maybe a few more miscues because, as we've mentioned, it just takes a little bit more energy. You've got to throw with a bit more touch. You don't have quite that top speed that you're used to. You can't necessarily jump as high because you can't spring off the sand in the same way that you can on the, you know, the hard courts of indoors or on or on the grass outdoors. And of course, indoors is where we've seen Valkyria play to great devastating effect in previous championships. Yeah, just seeing replay of the score there, getting it nice and early to the break side and relatively comfortable catch. Well, with a short squad, that is exactly what you want to do. Just be lethal as possible as an overshot sails in front of Polonotto. Down the sideline now. Kocin over with the deep shots. And Benedict with the box out for the score. Yeah, goes up nice and strong, both hands in the air. And a, a cool look out here on the sand, keeping uh, those granules out of the mouth. Yeah, the sand gets everywhere. I'm pretty sure that I'm still finding sand from my first beach tournament out in Paganello a decade ago. Like, it just... I've seen sand in items of clothing that I've that have never been within, I was going to say they've never been within 10 minutes of the beach. That's not true because I live within 10 minutes of the beach at home. But you know what I mean, it's not a sandy beach and yet somehow all my clothes will still have sand in it for a week. That's, that's the magic of sand though, there's sand everywhere. Even on a shingle beach there is a small smattering of sand where the rocks grind together, Benji. It's hot. Uh, I must admit, I love being on sand, it's just... Yeah, for it, especially when you've got a lot of tech equipment as we have, just got to take an extra bit of precaution with it all. Yeah, we're going to be finding some sandwich bags at some point in which to put our devices to keep them indeed silicone free where there should not be silicone. But a nice grab for Rodriguez, keeping the disc alive. This is good sort of back and forth swinging. But um, just a lack of focus error. Neves with the drop on the far side. Yeah, there was a foul called downfield away from the disc, but uh, retracted when they saw that the turnover was uh, unaffected by that. This is lovely, just flowing offense again from Valkyria, but they're going to throw an overshot. <laughs> Trying to hit the Hask. Yeah, first game of the weekend, neither side in full flow. Well, Valkyria have had some really nice moments, but a side stack for LFO. It's about converting those nice moments into, you know, a consistent clinical offense. Can she run it down? Oh, just loses her feet in the sand, just swallowed up by the monster. Just caught underneath it a little bit, I think, there, with the initial read. Yeah, nice separation for Scancy, but again, not going to work out. Oh, and just... Face marking one on one in the end zone. That's not really the way you tend to do it. Nunez getting bested. And the disc came from quite a way out as well. So maybe if she had a bit more communication, she'd been able to turn around and locate it. But it, honest, as a thrower, if I see that someone I want to throw to, especially in the end zone, is being face marked, my eyes light up greedily because I know I can just put this out, put a bit of space into it, get it as long as I can get it beyond that defender. By the time they see it, it's already too late. And that one just whistles right over the right over the head of Nunez. Well, there are some slightly less experienced players on the LFO squad. Having a chat to one of their uh, teammates, Ricardo. Didn't quite catch his surname. Very kindly gave me a bit of inside track ahead of this matchup between these two teams. So we know a little bit more about Valkyrie. We're used to seeing them at the European Championship level. And I think at the moment, that's just the difference maker. It's that, you know, that level of extra polish that Valkyria have. But LFO with the disc now, able to show us what they can achieve as they trail. They do have one point to their name. 
But Valkyria at the moment clear out in front and that is a nice quick turnover and the goal. And that'll be a timeout with Valkyria now in a 5-1 lead. They are, yeah, really rolling over their, their, uh, their Portuguese opponents at the moment. And I believe this probably gives us a nice opportunity to take a little break, Hannah. Indeed, so we shall do. And we'll see you with more of this first half on the other side. So LFO trailing against a very silky smooth Valkyria squad who are now putting on a zone to great effect, just sailing over the fingertips of Raquel Pinto. Needly underway. Hi, Joanna Larson. Kochenova puts one over the top and it's a nice, easy run down grab another goal for Valkyria. We spoke about how with a slightly shorter roster carrying the minimum possible 10 players that it really behooves Valkyria to get these points finished quickly and ruthlessly so they can you know, make sure that they're not really wiring down those legs both in this game and for the weekend ahead. The last thing you want is to have a point that takes 20 minutes and you've got five players out there that are absolutely gassed and you kind of always pits them on the back foot for the rest of the day. So uh, yeah, getting the points finished quickly is a real boon for Valkyria's offense as they did there. Absolutely. Well, one of the advantages, of course, of having a shorter squad is the fact that you really have the ability to hone those connections between yourselves quite quickly. One of the things that Valkyria in their grass uh, sort of outfit, should we say, when they were playing in Kaole was that they had too many pickups. They found it a bit of a struggle early stages of the tournament to sort of get to know each other, but clearly no such issues here on the beach. But the slow grind against the zone now for LFO. If they can just connect with each other, they're finding the good spaces. Oh, the Redemption there, I thought that was going to be a D. And you can see the cuddle between the two teammates having communicated with each other and slightly left the door open for the defence. Francesca Scanzi collects the goal and it's the second for LFO. They apply at long last a tourniquet. I'm with you. I thought the, the defender was going to come from the backside and be able to get that little sneaky poach block in there. But Francesca Scanzi does brilliantly there to maintain focus despite the pressure coming from the far side of the end zone and uh well, it was great stuff from Melikova you know putting herself in the zone to make that play but uh, yeah great right Scansi's uh, uh, now based in Porto but originally from Bergamo so bringing a little bit of an Italian flavour over to the Portuguese
So Benedict with a high pop to Larson. Oh, a nice bit of flow, but it's going to be taken away, getting a bit too hasty. And you can see the apology from the Valkyria thrower. Just, just too far behind. It's probably a bit harder to do on beach than it is on grass, where players are moving a little bit slower. But you do still need to lead that player out into space. And sometimes I think because you know that they can't cover the ground as quickly, you're a bit reticent to put it too far out in front and you get caught going the other way. So a nice inside shot to get the offense started for LFO. Lasering it down the near sideline. Going to overshoot Erika Castaneda. Oh, and wow. a huge recovery for Alex Benedict. Putting it immediately into the end zone. It's going to be pulled, plucked out of the air as she falls to the floor. And that is very tasty stuff for Valkyria. And they're going to take half. Benedict using all of her nearly 25 years of experience there. And I think when you play for that long, you can, you can quite strongly stick a finger or two up in the face of the finger, in the face of the conservation of greatness principle, make a ridiculous layout grab, and then just bomb it for the score. Like it's, like it's a day in the park. Here's something you'll notice actually when you watch Alex Benedict play. Although I don't believe we're, uh, we actually are at half. They seem to be playing on, regardless. Yeah, so there is a, there is a half, but it's kind of a notional half, a notional so to, half, so to speak. There's no extended break. You just switch ends if you need to and crack on. Oh, well, in our first game of the day, there seemed to be sort of more of a they, half time. Maybe they called a timeout as well to give themselves Maybe more both sides were just like, yeah, we want it, we'd rather have a breather, whereas here they're just like, let's get stuck in. Well, I like it. With the short format games, it's what you've got to do. But a nice high floating pull is going to give the defense the opportunity to run the disc down. Oh, yes, that's not going to work out. The low attempt, Norte. Oh, but look at that smackdown defense from Nunes. Maybe just a little bit casual from Melnikova on the throw, going for that backhand to the fourth side. And Nunez was ready and waiting for it. Well, having played as a junior alongside her father, Nunez picking up some creds, but unfortunately, LFO unable to make anything out of that opportunity. A high one near side, well, far sideline. And then just opening up the space. That's. It seems a little bit like Valkyria on offense, which is doing whatever the heck they want to do. There are moments where an LFO are sort of putting some pressure on and shutting some options down, but realistically, this is just like a knife through butter. It's about being convincing with your options. So that time, they get the disc on that far sideline there, and they really sell the fact that that disc is going down the line. Because they sell it, the force overcommits to stop that option, and that leaves the break side open. And when you've got a break side open with with throwers, the quality that Valkyria have, like Kochanova, that's going to be a bit of a recipe for disaster for a defense. Well, Valkyria really leading the charge here on the sound in Portimao. The sun is starting to rise to a much more pleasant angle for playing ultimate. The first game of the day, of course, players having to look into the sun as they track on that far sideline. And a big shot going up. Benedict defending underneath it. But the foul is going to be called by Rodriguez. Who's the uh, former handball athlete? Yeah, 15 years of handball. Which handball is always one of those sports that I will never watch and let, until the Olympics comes on. And then I, I just kind of hook it directly into my veins and I love it and it disappears off the radar again. It's fantastic. I once met a GB handball athlete at a uh, tournament in Frisbee tournament in Newcastle called Resolution, who dressed up as a Spice Girl on the uh, party night for New Year's Eve. It was uh, it was a look. Which one? Sporty, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that, that tracks to be honest. Call on the field though, violation. And so the disc going back to Raquel Pinto.
LFI will be hoping for a little bit more spice in their offense here, I think. Absolutely. Hopefully not too much scary. Perhaps a little treat of posh. So we did talk about Valkyria being a bit more polished. Oh, and that's a beautiful snag. You can see Benedict had already started to charge downfield, ready for a quick pick up and hug. Well, never underestimate Dina Rodriguez, tipped as one of the star players of LFO. But nice moving around the back from Nivis. She's going to put it up into the space for Rodriguez. Can she read it? Oh, just about too far. You could see sort of the right palm stretching out almost like a pizza server. Yeah, Rodriguez, it's going to be a weapon. Uh, represented Portugal here for EBUC three and a half years ago, where they finished fourth in the mixed division. Indeed, when they finished off that one against GB for the battle for dirty gold. I'll be honest, when you're on the beach, it feels like every medal's going to probably end up being a bit dirty. Certainly the medal I got from EBUC is. It's just extra polish. Don't ask how I got the medal, it was totally legitimate. Oh, it's, it's of course for your excellent services and commentary, Benji. Uh, no, it was actually a Spirit Winners medal for the Great Grand Masters Division. Oh, well, that's the, <laughs> that's the real medal that the people want. But this is lovely flow from LFO up that far side. and looking a little bit lost for options now. Never sort of, you know, pointing around saying, is anybody going to cut for me? I'm just going to loss it to the deep space. Yeah, with a still getting high, <laughs> don't want to be caught getting the... Uh, getting the empty turnover almost. So you may as well see if you can get someone to make a play. But it's strange though to see LFO sort of, you know, on the on the heels, sort of not really moving too much. A drop for Benedict. You can see these players, it's been a long old point, starting to get perhaps a little bit tired. And you feel like that probably plays into the hands of LFO with the, uh, with the greater numbers. Well, they've nearly got an entire extra full line. Nevis. Again, still sort of saying, can somebody please go for me? Rodriguez, though, is going to finish this one off at long last, and it goes to LFO. And that could be a little bit of a momentum generator to try and G up the comeback for LFO. Still sitting five points behind Valkyria, who have just been like a knife through warmed butter. Yeah, it's almost a double win there because not only were you able to get the point on the board, but you tired out a lot of key players for Valkyria. And because it is, it is very warm here, I would say, and we're not even running around. No, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. I might go for a little bit of a jog. I had a jog towards the pitches this morning. So we, uh, so, you know, got ourselves prepared. You're going to be tempted commentary. to have a bit of a swim in the uh, in the Atlantic Ocean over to our right hand well, side. Well, Benji, I hear you brought your very very famous shorts back from 2019. Uh, unfortunately, not those shorts because I no longer fit in them. Oh well, okay. But we need to get you a new pair of shorts. I do, I, that look I like do have I do have a pair of I do have a pair of swimming shorts. Unfortunately, these ones don't look like a primary school PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but what can you do? Well, clearly we just need to start a GoFundMe to buy you a range of excellently themed uh, swim shorts. Don't it know about that a, one, Chief. Well, it wouldn't be a particularly high target, you know. They, they, uh... Anyway, if you want to get on uh, onto social media, though, and check out the days of old and Benji's incredible sun, uh, swim short game, then feel free. But it's Valkyria now looking to be expansive across the side of the field, and they certainly are that gorgeous that just sinking sailing shot now patience around beautifully weighted cross field pass oh that's a little bit of a risky biscuit can it be drilled in no it cannot after such a nice shot to open up this near side of the field a cross expansive look that was just a dirty high dish. Yeah, still count rising. Again, just put some air under it, see if someone can chase it down, but the edge is always taking that one out of the far sideline. With the height that she releases it, you could think, you know, had the space to put the other angle on it. But it's a difficult one to go for, and LFO choose yards, trying to hit Paula Norte. Yeah, I think she. I think she planted to come back underneath there. But actually, if she just kept going, she might have. She would have had a better shot of it. 
Well, she definitely had the separation and her teammates like the look. Larson now is going to put that one with a lot of height and the height means it gets there into the end zone over the top of Nunez. And that is another goal for Valkyria's tally, leading a six points clear, nine to three. Yeah, with this uh, Valkyria side, there is a very strong uh, international flavor to it, I think we'll say. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, with the state of the world as it is at the moment, uh, Bula released a very strong statement earlier in the year saying that, you know, they rescinded the bids to to Russian teams uh, and uh, it would have been Belarusian teams, but I don't think there were any that qualified. Uh, they also waived the team fees for any Ukrainian fees teams that wanted to attend, although uh, there were none of those uh, that were able to make it in the end. But... Uh, Athletes that Russian athletes or Belarusian athletes that are that were kind of already outside Russia playing and contributing to their communities uh, still allowed to play with their uh, their current native clubs. Yeah, nice heads up play there, just peeling off that deepest player just to come back towards the disc a little bit and make the catch block. The question will be whether uh, LFO have given themselves too much work to do by allowing Valkyria that large lead. Yeah, been trading for the last few points, but that first half, the yeah, I'm going to call them Swedes. Nominally, blew them away. It's a lovely morning here in Portimao. So excited to be back. Because as we mentioned here for the uh, for EBUC, which is the uh, the national championships, so t players representing countries rather than clubs, a full three and a half years ago. Yeah, we covered the World Great Grandmasters Beach Ultimate Club Championships last year in uh, Sardinia, and that was a really good time had by all, I think. And I'm sure Grandmasters this year will be, uh, will be equally enjoyable.
Offense stagnating a little bit here. Oh, but a huge grab in the back of the end zone. Olya Kochenova with the goal. Hailing from Siberia originally. I'm sure she's about to be in a slightly warmer climate. Yeah, I was going to say, Siberia famous for the beaches, of course. <laughs> but now in, uh, in, uh, in, in warmer climes, in, uh, in Limassol, in Cyprus, so getting a lot of beach practice in and, and showing it there, full extension, horizontal for the layout score. Well, Valkyria are definitely a much more seasoned outfit than their opponents. Jennifer herself has been playing for 16 years. Many of the LFO players into sort of, you know, the mid, the mid single digits, about five or six, some with fewer experience. A couple of players in the nine, well, eight, nine and 10 year range. But generally speaking, LFO, a little bit of a younger side here. But Feisty still trying to gun for it. But just a little bit, perhaps too late for the comeback, who knows? Still 10 minutes left for them to try and advance forward. Still looking at that side stack, but it's overthrows again for LFO. Larson. Moving the mark around very well, but throws directly into the poach. Yeah, just guilty, I think, of locking onto the receiver downfield. I wonder if that poach defender there was, was shielded a little bit by the force. So the thrower never saw her. Well, there was a lot of pivoting and then not too much in terms of commitment, but that's a really beautiful inside shot to Rodriguez, who's going to put it into acres of room in the end zone. Has to come under a tiny bit, but it's fantastic stuff. Raquel Pinto with a little spike to finish that one off. Yeah, again, they've been able to trade, really, in the second half of this game. But in the first half, Valkyria just created such a big margin that they could trade out, I think they would happily trade out this game. Obviously, you'd rather get it, you know, get those breaks and get it done and dusted. But, you know, a scenario where they're not getting broken is A-OK -okay for Valkyrie. Well, a moment of pure brilliance there for LFO when they're hitting the top of their execution. It looks really quite stunning. But at the moment, it's Valkyria who've just been that bit more steady, Benji. So Valkyria coming out on offense. Nice high grab for Kochenova. And an immediate put, Katrina Barry for the goal. Now that is more like the offense we saw from Valkyria at the beginning of the game. They've got a little bit messy in the midsection, but back to smooth and polished performance, using their height very well. Again, quick points, perfect for Valkyria. A, because give your players a bit more of a rest, and B, because it means you're not getting broken. One, two passes, that's, that's all you need at times. Especially on beach, smaller fields, so it feels like you can hit the end zone from really anywhere. The full field hucks a lot more on than maybe they are on grass. Well, we've seen LFO come a bit unstuck with trying to use big shots, sort of, you know, especially when they got the turn. They've had some real nice moments where it could have been so devastating, but they're just they're a little bit hesitant when they move down field occasions. Almost like they're not expecting that big shot to go up. They're just like, oh, I'm just trying to create space, you know, move my mark around so I can have an easy under. They've executed some beautifully. That one just going through the straight in the center of the field. And just to avoid all of the defenders. Oh, and that is beautiful stuff. Nice low release from Marta Uniak. And hitting Patricia Nunez for the goal. A much better second half performance from, from LFO. I was going to say, I wonder what they said during that half time huddle to, to keep it, but they didn't. They didn't have a half time huddle. They did take a timeout late in that first half, obviously, did provide them that opportunity to get the mental reset, try and iron some things out in this game. But yeah, especially first game of the tournament, you will, it is understandable, maybe have those opening game jitters, the miscommunications, the overthrows, just as you kind of adjust and get your eye and get the range sorted and uh, 
Valkyria pounced on that. And that's the difference at the moment. So this action is, of course, the women's division pool A, A1 versus A3. Of course, Valkyria, that top spot in the division. So we see the disc just trail out of the hand of Melnikova. Goes full stretch to try and keep that one alive. And of course, this divisional format, top of the pools, pool of four pools, two of four, two of three. Top spot advancing straight into the championship bracket. And of course, those pre quarter final redemption matches for spots two and three. So it doesn't necessarily matter if LFO can't best this one. They will still be in with an opportunity. First game for both of these teams. And that is a beautiful execution. Just easy stride for Olyak Kochenova. And that'll bring Valkyria within one of the victory. Indeed, of course. Games to 14. 13. Sorry, 13. Oh, our scoreboard was so on it there. Yeah. Of course, it has to be an odd number finish, doesn't it, Benji? Well, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a tournament say we're going to finish it an even number. Maybe we should do it. We should run our own tournament. Old TV tournament? First of, yeah, first of four. Really <laughs> short games. Bang, off you go. First of two. How's that? That's that's too short. Like, even I even I agree with that. But yes, one point within victory now, and Valkyria, by virtue of the hot start, I've looked good value for it. You have to say, but for LFO, given how they started this game, a vast improvement in their performance. Absolutely, and hopefully they can go on to great things. May well see them later on on this three-day format. Finals day, of course, will be Sunday. We're bringing you all that coverage, so make sure you set your alarms. If it's anything like finals day at last, EBUCC, we are in for an absolute cracker, where, with the exception of the women's bronze medal match in the morning, five universe point games in a row. Utterly, utterly ludicrous. Well, a lovely find for LFO. Nothing ludicrous about that one. Just nice, pure, good frisbee. And a score for Patricia Amoroso. So it's just been trading out in this second half. That work that Valkyria did in the first section of the match really just put themselves, did all the work they really needed to do. They've had some flashes of their earlier form, but I think Valkyria's key is going to have to just be going ahead early with that short roster. <laughs> and LFO, just nice to see them not have those focus errors that they had at the beginning of the match, Benji. No, they definitely have cleaned it up a bit. It's understandable, you know, you get... I was going to say you get your feet wet, and we're not that close to the sea, but metaphorically, you know, you get, you get used to the surface a bit more, you get your eye and you find your range, bit more comfortable putting touch on those throws. But they've been growing in confidence as well. So you see Benedict throwing at, at the sand. We need, to, we, need to find a, we need to open up our thesaurus, Benji, and find as many words for sand as we possibly can this championship. Suggestions in the comments, please. But LFO with an opportunity to notch another one on the board. Keep this game alive. But a missed clap catch. You should see the Sound of doom, Castaneda. Another chance for the victory here for Valkyria. Kotunova with a lovely put into space for Benedict. Surely that's good. Yes, it is. And Valkyria close this one with the point cap 13 to 7 over LFO of Portugal. That was a match, Benji. Good hard fought victory. And you see here the value of starting fast because even though LFO were really able to get things clicking as the game progressed, in the shorter games, they just didn't really give themselves any time to, to mount the comeback and the fight back. And uh, yeah, Valkyria just happy to trade the game out. Well, you can see why they have the seeding that they do. Acres of experience up against this younger Portuguese outfit. But we're going to wrap it up here. Stay tuned, though. Coming up next on your screens, we will have some fantastic action from the Open Division. Salas Bills of Latvia, plus some extra fun friends, versus Solbang from 
the Czech Republic? Uh, that's Switzerland. Switzerland, there we yeah, go. Yeah, from Sham in, the, uh, in, in Switzerland. Fantastic. So keep your eyes glued. We'll be right back and we will see you on the other side. Thank you. 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 Thank you.